Welcome back to our channel, Machinery and Technology. Today we have a truly electrifying topic to delve into, how to transport black gold. So if you're ready to spark your curiosity, let's dive right in. Soon after entrepreneurs in the 1850s began exploding crude oil as a source of energy, the nascent oil industry found itself in a dilemma. How were early oil prospectors supported to transport this black gold from the remote locations from the Wensi Spread to a place where it could be refined, sold and used? Today oil tankers fall into two basic categories, crude tankers and product tankers. Crude tankers are the larger of the two. They move raw, unrefined oil from the place where it's pumped out of the earth to the refineries where it's processed into the fuel and other products. Product tankers, of the other hand, are smaller than the crude tankers and move already processed petroleum products to markets where those products can be sold and used. Corporations are always seeking the most efficient way to accomplish a task in order to maximize profits. Due to their immense size, oil tankers provide an easy and expensive way to transport oil over long distances. In fact, it only costs around 2 to 4 cents per gallon to transport oil using a typical tanker. Like many other influential technologies, oil tankers have helped us progress our civilization, but they have presented us with considerable problems as well. Without oil tankers, it would be impossible to enjoy the mobility many of us take for granted. Yes, some of the worst man-made environmental disasters resulted from oil tankers accidents, befalling waterways and beaches. In addition to classify these mighty maritime vessels, screw tankers and product tankers, we can subcategorize them even further. Some tankers are built to haul oil from one point to another, while replenishment others are designed to free refuel oil to ships at sea and refuel them. Sometimes, if so, bow tankers become too old or uneconomical to operate, they are used in floating storage units. Numerous blocks come together to form a large ship. The innovative ideas express its ship's constant and innovative efforts to achieve these ideas are Hyundai Heavy Industries' unique comparativeness and manufacturing top quality. Ship World. In 1972, Hyundai Heavy Industries started a new paradigm in shop building with a simultaneous construction in the world's largest ships. In four decades, the one small fishing village in Amepo Usan. Bay has grown into a dynamic center leading the global shipbuilding industry, with shipyard in Usan and Kunsan with 11 dry docks between 
then with the harbor walls 8 km, long and production facilities with the most advanced equipment. Hyundai Heavy Industries can deliver up to 90 ships of different types annually to meet delivery dates required by the customers. Hyundai's comparative advantage was further enhanced with the start of the construction of the Kunsan shipyard in 2010. Oil tankers generally have from 8 to 12 tanks. Each tank is split into two or three independent compartments by four and after back heads. The tanks are numbered with a tank, one being the forwardmost. Individual compartments are referred by the tank number and the effort ship's position such as a one port, three starboard or six center. A coffer dam is a small space left open between two bulkheads to give protection from head, fire or collision. Tankers generally have confirmed forward and aft of the cargo tanks, and sometimes between individual tanks. A pump room houses all the pumps connected in the tanker's cargo lines. Some larger tankers have two pump rooms. A pump room generally spans the total breadth of the ship. A major component of tanker architecture is the design of the hull of the outer structure. A tanker with a single outer shell between the products and the ocean is said to be single hulled. Most newer tankers are double hulled, with an extra space between the hull and the storage tanks. Hybrid designs such as a double bottom and a double sided combined aspect of the single and double hull designs. All single hull tankers around the world will be phased out by 2026 in accordance with the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from the Ships, 1973. The United Nations has decided to phase out single hull of oil tankers by 2010. Some of the advantages of the double hull design that were mentioned include ease of ballasting in emergency situations, reduces practice of salt water ballasting in cargo tanks, decreases corrosion, increased environmental protection, cargo discharge is quicker, more complete and easier, tank washing is more efficient, and better protection in low impact collision and grounding. In all, double hull tankers are said to be safer than a single hull in a grounding incident, especially when the shore is not very rocky. The safety benefits are less clear or larger vessels, and in the case of high speed impact.
An oil tanker insert gas system is one of the most important parts of the design. Fuel oil itself is a very difficult to ignite, but is a hydrocarburetion vapors are explosive when mixed with the air certain concentrations. The purpose of the system is to create an atmosphere inside tanks in which the hydrocarburetion oil vapors cannot burn. An insert gas is introduced into the mixture of hydrocarbon vapors in air. It increases the lower flammable limit of lowest concentration which ways vapor can be ignited. At the same time, it decreases the upper flammable limit of highest concentration at which the vapors can be ignited. When the total concentration of oxygen in the tank decreases to about 11%, the upper and the lower flammable limits coverage and the flammable range disappears. Insert gas system deliver air with an oxygen concentration of less than 5% by volume. As the tank is pumped out, it is filled with the inner gas and kept into the safe state until the next cargo is loaded. The exception in the cases where the tank must be entered. Safely gas freeing a tank accomplished by the purging carbon hydro vapors to insert the garlic hydro concentration inside the tank in is under about 1%. Thus, this air replaces insert gas. The concentration cannot rise to the lower flammable limit and it's safe. If you work in the old transport business or have interested, you'll probably hear the following terms. Double hull. A mandatory design feature on newly built oil tankers. Double hull construction means shipped two hulls, one inside the other. They offer an extra layer of protection against damage that might otherwise result in a catastrophic oil spills. WTD. Dead weight tonnage refers to the maximum load of cargo fuel, provisions, and ballast a ship can carry. DWT is usually measured in metric tons. OBO. The idea behind these horror bulk oil carriers is to give them something to carry on. The return leg of their trips. So that can make money both ways. As the name suggests, the return cargo is usually iron ore. LR1, LR2, large range 1 and large range 2 tankers have a WWT between 45,000 and 159,000 tons. VLCC, very large crude carriers. Weight between 160,000 and 319,000 DWT. Oil carriers of the size and above are known as super tankers. ULCC ultra large crude carriers are the largest ocean going vessels with WTS of 320 metric tons and above and are comfortable and length to hide the sound world's tallest building.